Good evening, everyone. It's late. It's late, and it's almost Halloween. There's lots going on. Um, so I decided to do a little live feed uh, the night before the show for uh, Recycled and Reclaimed. Um, I want to touch base with all of you. Um, there's lots of things going on. And some are absolutely amazing things. Forgive the glasses. <laughs> so a week ago, the last pair of contacts that I had, they decided to get destroyed in my eyes. So I'm rocking the big scientist glasses. So now you all know that I am blind as a bat without glasses. So there's one of my secrets out. Um, Facebook's an inter interesting thing. Facebook is an interesting thing because... You know, depending on the trajectory of your life, you'll have people that know you in a certain realm, just in the art world, and then you'll also know family or different friends that um, have known you in, in um, a specific light. And worlds can collide on Facebook. Worlds can collide on Facebook, and worlds collide on Facebook with me. It's absolutely the truth. Um, and so I thought that tonight would be a nice night just to talk with all of you on all the different levels of how you know me and um, how I know you and what's going on here at the studio, which there's lots of really good things going on. And um, I want to share that with you and um, just talk. So that's kind of nice, you know? That's one thing that I really had belief in Facebook when it first came out. I, ha I had um, some folks telling me early on that Facebook was initially created by the CIA to eventually create a group think um, that people would be socially shamed on this very empowering platform if they spoke something that was not um, the trajectory of the future. And when I, someone told me that in 2006, I didn't really believe them so much because I believe in people. I believe in my friends. I've been very blessed in this world, very much so, to have really deep connections with people, a lot of people, and um, we just get to the meat of things, you know, like, I'm not one of those people that, you know, we talk bullshit, and, you know, I'm sorry if you don't like swearing, I'm just honest. That's just how I talk. So, you know, if you're looking for someone who's perfect that says things that, you know, avoid swearing. And for once, every once in a while, I just say it. It's just the truth. Um, but I just go right to the meat. And we find the meat, you know. And so I take every um, connection that I have with people very seriously. It's cool, you know. Um, what's been happening... Uh, the last week has been pretty amazing. Not only just in the house slash studio, I mean, whatever you want to call it, you know, I don't really like labels, but, you know, um, I came back from Los Angeles and I just made the house into something that would be conducive for people to come and, and share their art and share their truth and share their whatever they had to give here, right? That's the point. I had no idea how many amazing people and the talent and the beauty that would come from it. It's pretty cool. Um, for those of you who have experienced coming here, and I'm so grateful that you have and that you've come and supported what's been going on, um, it means the world to me. It really does. And I really appreciate that. And if I haven't said it before, I'm saying it now. And I really thank you. I thank every single one of you. Um... Sometimes 
sorry, I got a phone call, but I just declined it. <laughs> um, sometimes I talk about things that some people on Facebook um, don't know me in that respect. Sometimes I post things um, that seem to throw people off. And they go, where is that coming from? Why does she say that? It's been going on for a while now. And um, this Facebook Live thing is something relatively new. And it's a really cool way to what I originally thought Facebook could be is to, no matter where you are in the world, you can directly connect with the people that you care about and you know, and you can talk to them and share ideas and share thoughts and no one gets judged because you know each other. You know, it's like, you know what, if Kim thinks this, there must be some validity to it because I know Kim. So let me ask questions before I start judging, before I start condemning. That's what I was hoping. And you know what, we could, we could have changed the whole world with Facebook 10 years ago with sharing ideas and talking real shit, talking really good stuff with all the people that we really know and really um, meet in the world. That was the ultimate, for me, um, power with Facebook. Because before Facebook, you know, I don't look old, but I am. I've lived a long life. I have. I don't look it, but I have. And before Facebook, you know, I would meet all these wonderful people and then I would lose contact with them. And, you know, in order to, to maintain contact, you, it was a lot of effort. I mean, you'd have to write, it would, there were pen pals, you'd have to send photographs, you'd have to really, really work hard to let people know what was going on in your world and keep them connected with you. And on top of that, Forget trying to, I mean, that's just trying to keep in contact with personal things. But let's go even further as artists. Um, I take the word artist very seriously. It's not about painting and looking cool. It's not about pop culture. It's not about what's gonna sell and what's going to market you. That's never my, my um, definition of art. And, and I really hope that for those of you that, that I'm friends with, it's not yours either. It was really about talking truth, going through the pain, going through all the different things that we experience in the world, and trying to figure things out. And, it, and with, with love, you know, and with the other artists that we meet in the world and we're friends with, no matter how different the perspective can be, we can respect that in each other. Because if we don't talk about those things and our art doesn't reflect that kind of stuff, we're the last gatekeepers in this world to share that kind of thing. Because you think any other place does that? You think any other job does that? No, it doesn't do that. So anywho, yeah, I was hoping that Facebook was going to do that. And uh, over the last 10 years, I've seen a big decline in that. And I've seen a lot of division. I've seen a lot of language that destroys people and destroys connections with each other out of false pretenses. I'm probably rambling, but I just wanted to get that out. So let's talk about what's happened this week. So um, there is a show coming up tomorrow night called Recycled and Reclaimed. And you know, let's get real. It's simple. It's just in my backyard. 
It's a very humble, simple place. And it's just a five car garage in the backyard. Um, but there's something going on. There's something happening and there's a conversation that means a whole lot that's going on. And I'm really humbled and really proud about that, you know? Um, is it, if that's possible to be duplicitous in that, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I will say that Stephen showed up on Sunday with his family and we have had an amazing week of discussion and talk about all kinds of things that are going on in the world and turning it into art. And we want to share it with you. We want to share it with people, you know? I mean, no matter what has been said or what's gone on in all kinds of different ways, um, this is something special. And I really hope that tomorrow night that um, those of you that can come out will come out and uh, check it out and experience something that you might not otherwise experience. It's, it's definitely something new. It's definitely a conversation that's not popular, but it is definitely in the underbelly of what's going on. Um, it's pretty interesting. So, let's talk about some other things. Not only in this week have um, we been putting this show together, and I want to say thank you, truly thank you, for every single person who has reached out um, to donate towards this event. Um, Angie and Jim from Victorious Libertas, thank you so much. We love you so much. They are a huge light. And they've been so supportive and so amazing. Thank you. And all the, the people that have donated to make it happen, you know, it's interesting. Those that are wealthy... This is how it goes down. You know, you get you get foundations, okay, that come from maybe like four different people that say we'll only support a certain conversation in the world. And as long as certain artists vie for talking about a certain conversation in the world, we'll give them whatever they want. And then they're a lightning bolt to change culture. But we don't ask them and we don't ask ourselves what's really being said and what's really being told to us. And there's a lot of folks here on my Facebook that are high and low in the art world. And I'm just going to ask you to critically think about the things that you see in the art world and what's really being pushed, what's really being said. Not the celebratory thing. Don't listen to the bullshit marketing thing. Look at the real art. Look at what they're really saying. Ask yourself what they're really saying. What are they really doing? And who's funding it? And who's funding it? What are they really about? And how much are they um, influencing so many people? Because there's four multi-billion dollar donors that fund everything they do. And it makes everyone go, ooh, they've got so much money. And they've got so much, so much power with that. Maybe we should listen to them. That's where we lose, that's where we lose perspective. That's where we lose our power as just individuals and people. And you know what? You can get down on me. I don't care. That's fine. You can, you don't, if you don't see it that way, that's cool. But the thing is, I've been in this game since I was 13 years old, if not earlier. I mean, as a kid, I was even seeing this crap. But I really started seeing it as a teenager. And you know what's interesting is the individuals, the individuals that are out there, I'm going to smoke a cigarette. I hope you guys don't mind. 
you know, there's there's some folks that are Christian and they follow me because, you know, I'm Christian, but I'm not perfect. I'm not. Um, but I do care about truth. But we all have our we all have our thing. We all have our vices, don't we? We do. And if you do, if you don't think you do, you're lying. But I do enjoy a cigarette from time to time. And when you've been through what I've been through, you smoke too. I'm just saying. Anywho. So, um, let's go to Corey Feldman. Let's jump from big people that get lots of money to, do, to, to spread lies. I'm going to tell you, the, the biggest liars are the ones that are most funded. That's the truth. I'm sorry to tell you that, but it's the truth. And those that are telling the truth don't really have much. And that's okay. I mean, it is what it is. But understand when an individual is trying to do something to shed light on something, and they ask for a donation or they ask for a certain help, you know what the power would be with the people? Is to actually donate towards that. And I'm not saying donate towards me. If you don't believe in what I do or you don't like me for one reason or another, if you don't like my hair, you don't like my personality, you don't like what I'm saying, well, dude, I totally respect that. And, you know, that's cool, you know. But the, the, the people, the individuals, the people in your community... The small guys that aren't bought off by liars, big liars, big liars, like, oh, George Soros, big liars, big art world liars, Damien Hurst, liar, Ai Weiwei, liar, lots of liars out there. Ai Weiwei is a liar. I'm sorry, guys. If you want to know why I say that, just message me on that one. The liars. They're funded by the enemies. They're, en they're funded by the enemy. They're funded by people that try to destroy humanity. But you have individuals, you have small people that for one reason or another, their lives have gone one way or another and they've met interesting people and they learn a certain truth. And they want to share that with people. If you believe in what they're talking about, don't shame them when they ask for a donation. Because you have no idea. They've, they, they've put their life on the line to share this with you and to talk about it. Let's go to Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman was not asked to go into Hollywood. He didn't have a choice. He was two years old when his parents decided that they were gonna make money off their child. And they didn't protect him. There are some parents in the world that are like this and it sucks. And Corey Feldman went through some really nasty stuff And I know what Corey Feldman went through because I'm not famous and I'm not anybody, but I've been given a gift of knowing and meeting friends in my life who have gone through similar situations that he's gone through. And I'm blessed to be able to be that friend to pull them out of the muck. And that's cool, and I, I and I respect. I'm 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 grateful for that. Um, but what Corey's doing right now, I don't think that most people really realize how unbelievably courageous that is. What he's doing, and there's lots of things going on in the world right now. But for what he's doing. 
especially in the art world and Hollywood and in all kinds of different ways, for him to be able to be, be courageous enough to stand up and talk about what he personally experienced. And also, one thing that got me the other night was how he stood up for his friend, Corey Haim. You know, his friend, he was best friends with Corey Haim since the time they were like 10 years old. Maybe younger, but I think for sure at least 10 years old. And this is where I understand, this is where I understand friendship. And I'm not going to say any names, but I've had a good friend. I've had good, I've had a really good friend since I was a kid who went through some really nasty stuff. And I fought for her. I used to, I used to beat up people that, that, that would hurt her. I'd beat them up. They tried to, they, they, they tried all kinds of things with her and I'd beat the crap out of them as a little kid because that was my friend and no one was going to mess with her. No one was going to hurt her. Well, Corey Feldman went through the similar things that Corey Haim went through. And at the time, I guess Corey Haim didn't feel like Corey Feldman had really been there for him to protect him in that situation. And when Corey Haim died, something clicked with Corey Feldman. And he stood up for his friend. That is so noble. This isn't, this isn't about TMZ. This isn't about Inside Edition. This isn't about gossip. This is about real people. They are real people, you guys. I'm sorry. These are real people that have gone through real things that are really tough. Very exploitive. And Corey Haim decided to stand up for his friend and he started talking truth about what was really happening and what really went down and you know in the last day or so um, there were when he apparently Corey Feldman put out a, a video recently in the last day or so about all this and he's reaching out to people to say look I'm gonna put my butt on the line and I'm gonna tell my real truth about very very powerful people and I'm gonna tell the truth but I do need your support I do need help because he's going up against multi-billionaires that have tons of lawyers and if you know about lawyers man they will turn anything upside down to shut you up they will destroy your life they will take away your finances they will hurt your kids you'll be left destitute you have no idea you have no idea what they'll do they have no limits to what they'll do to protect themselves and the bad stuff that they've done. But if you have someone on that level like Corey Feldman who's willing to put his butt on the line and speak the truth and it, and this isn't just about Corey Feldman's story. Do you know how many thousands of children, millions of children have watched movies have watched television shows, have wanted to become that actor, who have wanted to become that star, and they have no idea the sacrifice. They have no idea the consequences and the pitfalls 
and the things that happened to them in order to get there. Corey's willing to shed a light on so many things to protect your children, to protect your families, to let you know what's really going on. Some people tried shaming him for asking for community support. How many times have you bought a movie ticket for the bad guys? How many times have you given your taxes that went to the CIA, that went to, to trafficking people and weapon weaponry, warmongering? How many times have you spent money on so many things that fund the other side because it felt good for you at the moment. You just wanted to be entertained. You just want to be entertained. You just want, you work hard, you work some shithole job because society tells you that's what you need to do. And the only way to escape is to spend money on the same pieces of you know what they create that world in the first place and you don't say anything you're glad to give it because it makes you feel good for a moment because it lets you escape because you think it's just a movie but you don't know what those actors go through you don't know what all those people go through to be on the screen and yet when you have somebody who's willing to flip it on its head and say you know what I'm gonna do a documentary to save people, no one wants to give any money. And they sit there and they throw them under the bus and go, oh, you just want money for this. No, that's not true. That's when you support. And I'll tell you why. If people really wanted to have a better future for their kids, if people really wanted to create an amazing world, an amazing economy, that's where their money would go, to those kind of folks. Those kind of folks that want to expose what's really going on so that people can understand and people can be free from it. And then you know what? We can have a whole bunch of campfires and hang out and just have a good old time. Sometimes people think that I'm real heavy. Well, I guess I can be. I guess I can be because I've seen a lot. That's all. And I don't lie. I don't lie. I see, um, I see a lot of things that make create a lot of chaos for people. Ultimately, what, what I'd love to do is to always be able to have people come and just enjoy and have joy, have beautiful music, hang out, have fun. Good stuff, man. Just good stuff, right? But the world doesn't really push that very much. And where we put our money and where we put our resources, if we look at the fruit of where the world is right now, we got to question all that. That's all I'm saying. So let's get back to the show tomorrow. We've had so much fun. Oh my gosh, we've had so much fun. Let's get to, let's get to some good stuff. Let's get to some good stuff. We've had an amazing group of people that have come together. I mean, people, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a shout out. I mean, Sean Stone, thank you. Um, I've been following Sean Stone for probably like five or six years now. He's Oliver Stone's, Stone's son, and he's been doing amazing work with um, all, all kinds of different um, stories and what's going on. He... You know, he's been following Stephen Sheldon, who's here now, um, and his story. And so 
they're going to do an interview next week, which is fantastic. It's wonderful. And um, Jim and Angie from Victorious Libertas, amazing. Thank you so much for all your support and, and the work that you're doing. Um, I want to thank everyone locally who has supported and, uh, and just really been behind what's going on. It's been really amazing. So it's good. Tomorrow night, this is the plan. So we're opening up the gate at 7 o'clock. And Stephen has a beautiful art installation. Um, prepared in the studio and it's also very thought-provoking it's gonna be kinda heavy um, but you know what though we do it with humor and we do it with a lightness that um, that's the only way to do it it's the only way to do it you know um, we're gonna show his film it's the very first premiere of his film it's called Spark um, and now we're going to do that at 8 o'clock. So I hope that you all get here and you come and you experience it. Experience it. This is a subject that's really going to blow the roof off a lot of different things that are going on in the world. And I'm very grateful that it's happening here. It's good. It's very, very good. Very good. Um, yeah. There's a reason why, you know, for, for those of you who know me, know me in, in different pockets of my life, um, there's a reason why I'm really connected to this topic. And I haven't really spoken about it publicly before. I mean, I've, I've talked about it in different circles, but not directly. There is a reason why there is such a thing as child abuse and child sexual abuse. You know, people know it for... Um, isolated inc incident incidences. It's, it's an isolated incidence. Is it? When you take away a child's innocence, you take away their power, you take away their soul of who they were. When you meet a child, even when they're like three or four years old, they're so strong and they're so smart and they're just so, they know who they are. Do you know that? I don't have children, but I've been very, very grateful to be around so many children in my life. To see that over and over and over again. They're not born with fear. They're not born with bitterness. They're not born with um, contempt. They're not born with self-destruction. That's placed in them through different people and different events that happen in their world. And we need to recognize that. It's really important. Um, where does this come from? And, and why, does, why do these things happen? It was a very special friend of mine meant a lot to me. He met, he, and he still does, of course. Of course. They went through a really bad thing growing up. And it always affected him his whole life. He never felt good enough. Never felt good enough. And if nothing else, this show is dedicated to him. Because I've watched this man through most of his adulthood, struggle 
with so much that he didn't necessarily need to struggle with. He never should have had to struggle with so much that he did. And I saw so much in him. That's the, you know, that's the trick. So many people see the surface of bad things in people. And uh, for me, I tend to see people in their best light. I see them. I see how they were or how they were going to be as a kid. I see it. But what I've learned over the years, hey Lily, how's it going? It's good to see you. Um, what I've learned over the years, and really, when I when I meet someone and I really connect with them, and I'm just like, I see you. If they don't see that in themselves, no matter what you say, even though as much as you could possibly say, yeah, sometimes it works, but but sometimes it doesn't. And with this person, the more I saw the beauty in them, the more they saw the shame because of the child abuse that they experienced. And it, it wasn't just the everyday child abuse. It was the kind of stuff that people talk about in supposed conspiracy theory conversations. And I'm just going to ask all of you because most of, pretty much all of you that are Facebook friends with me, you come from many different backgrounds and many different belief systems and many different experiences and many different political belief systems. I'm going to ask that you trust what I'm saying for a minute. And I'm going to really try to reach across the road. And you leave behind that word conspiracy theory for a minute. And you start realizing that there are certain people in this world that have experienced those things. And to call it a conspiracy theory is to dismiss their real, very, very real experience. And that's why they hide in the shadows. And that's why they live in pain and they live in shame and they live in fear their whole life. And even when there's someone that loves them so much, they can't accept it because they don't think they are worth anything because of these things that they went through and they can't even share with anybody because if they did they call they 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 people that would tell them they're crazy it didn't happen i'm going to ask all of you the next time there is someone in your life that opens up and share something with you, very vulnerable, that you may not have experienced. And it may not wrap around your head or your belief system or your reality for a minute, but it's their reality. It's their experience that you take yourself out of the equation and you are simply there for your friend or you're simply there for that acquaintance or you're simply there for that stranger on the bus that just opens up and talks about something that's all I'm gonna say just because it didn't happen to you doesn't mean that it doesn't exist um, ever since the election that is why I've talked about these things. I don't care about political affiliation. I don't care about any of that. I don't care. It should not matter what side you are on politically. When we talk about child abuse, sex trafficking, organ trafficking, human trafficking, 
satanic ritual abuse. I'm sorry. There are people in the world that do that. You may not know them. You may not want to know that situation, but the fact of the matter is it's there. It is there. And to deny the people that have gone through that and they're trying to heal and they open up to you and you tell them that they're crazy is the worst thing in the world that you could possibly do. For someone like Corey Feldman, who to me is so unbelievably brave, I'm so proud of you, Corey. Because I know what you're I know what you're gambling to say what you're saying. Because you love your friend and you want to do right by him and you want to do right by other people that may naively walk into that world not knowing different people that are involved. Sorry, Johanna called. Johanna, just come to the back door. Johanna, just come to the back door. I've got a, I've got a house full of people. It's been epic. I love that. Um, I'm sorry I'm rambling tonight. I don't mean to be off-putting. I really don't. Um, you know, when we hang out and, and when people are around, I'm just fun. And I love people. And I just want to have a good time. You know, and I want to think ideas. And I want to create great art. And I want to have amazing friends that do wonderful music and just bring joy to the world. You know what I mean? And just come together and have a good old time. Ultimately, that is what I'm about. That is what I've been about for a very long time. But you have to understand, I'm not, okay, yeah, you're right. I'm not famous. That's good. That's a good thing. I never wanted to be. But I have roamed around and I've met a lot of different people and when you care about people and you listen to their stories and you find out what they've experienced and you have to pull them out of junk you finally get to the point where it's not good enough to just quietly deal with these situations privately and hope that it heals on a higher level. When I was in Hollywood and when I was all these, I saw the, all, all of this stuff and I dealt with it privately and I helped those folks privately as best I could. But it up so much. I'm so sorry, guys. Like, there's tons of. Okay, we're back. Sorry, there's another person calling. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I never get phone calls until this week. Um, I will call you back, Kim. Um, there's a reason. So, this has been a very long... I think we're back. So, I apologize if this is a very... It seems rambling, and it seems like a very long um, Facebook rant. If that, whatever that is. I guess I can end with this. I had so many hopes and belief systems in the idealism of what I thought the art world was and my dreams. When I got out there and I saw what you had to become to be that popular artist no and when you also see the destruction that happens to people that you care about you can't not say something and you also can't not show them that there's a better way so That's why I started doing the studios, because I thought, okay, I'm not going to go that route, but 
for the limited amount that I've got, I'm going to create a space that's safe for people that don't have to compromise and they can do their highest art without compromising themselves. Even if it's just for a night, showing what they have to show here, wherever, whether it was at Suite 106, whether it was at West 11, whether it was here at 634. And it doesn't matter how big or small it is, the point is it's here. And then if that triggers other people to realize that, you know what, my art is in my own heart, and it's in my own connections, it's in my own home, it's in my own life, it's not outside myself, it's not outside my own resources, I have it within me. And I don't need to compromise. It's a beautiful thing. I'm going to finish it now. But I hope I see you guys tomorrow night. And I know Stephen's going to be super stoked if you show up. And we've got some special guests that are going to be coming up. I can't say right now who they are. But there'll be some special guests that will be here as well. And um, for all of you that, um, here, I just want, I want you to know I really care about every single one of you. And I just hope the best, and I believe in the best of all of you. And you don't have to do things outside yourself or your own conscience to be the best artist possible. You were born with it. Just listen to your heart, listen to your gut. And that's it. And you know, for me, I, I take it even higher. You know where that higher spirit is for me. And that's the truth for me. I've seen a lot. So I know that for me is Christ. But um, for some of you, you don't think that. And that's all right. I respect that. But, um, you know, just keep doing what you do. And um, all right. I don't know if this meant anything or not. Who cares? It's just talk. But, um, it's good. And we will be seeing you tomorrow. I will be doing a live feed of some of the stuff that's going on. Not all of it. Because that wouldn't be fair to the people that are coming in person. Because if you come in person, you see all the good stuff. But, um, for those of you that can't physically make it to the studio for tomorrow night's epic show. I'm so stoked. It's not, again, it's not popular. It's not a conversation that's like, I actually, you know what's funny? I sent the press release out to like Post Gazette, to City Paper, whatever. Dude, they were like so not down with it. They were like, we don't want to talk about this shit at all. We're like totally going to ignore you exist. Like forget about it. But that's okay. That's when you know you're doing something good. That's when you know you're doing something good. That's one thing that Vincent Van Gogh taught me when I was a kid. And um, last shout out, I know I'm rambling. Forgive me, I, I know I'm rambling. It's just been a weird week. It's been a good week. It's been a real weird week. But um, the last shout out I'm gonna do tonight is to the movie Loving Vincent. I haven't seen it yet. But my first love in art was Vincent Van Gogh. And I'll tell you why. I was uh, probably five years old when I really started being influenced by him and I was learning a lot of his color and how he was able to take a certain reality and, and push this color like no one had ever seen before. His, his whole perspective was so different and not one person valued his vision. Not one person valued his painting except his his brother. I think it was brother or his cousin. His brother or his cousin. He was the only other person that really believed in what Vincent saw. <clears throat> excuse me. I, excuse me. Um, his whole life, major struggle, always being misunderstood, getting angry. And I know anger. I mean, like, definitely, I go through it. You know what I mean? 
But this movie that's come, that Loving Vincent movie, just even from the trailer alone, and I can't wait to see this film. It's playing at the Manor in Squirrel Hill for all you Pittsburghers that are around. But, you know, anyone who else is around the country, just check out where Loving Vincent's playing in your area. It takes uh, Vincent's reality, his whole story, and his supposed death, his, his supposed suicide. Everything is, is put into visually seeing the entire world and his entire story through his paintings. There are over a thousand artists that hand painted this film. And I'm going to say this. For all of you artists out there, if you think that you're doing something that's not popular, but you know you're speaking a certain truth, and you're speaking a certain beauty, always, whenever you're in doubt, always think of Vincent Van Gogh. Always. There are so many supposed artists back then that were making money at the time. No one remembers them. They remember Vincent. Do you want to be known now by speaking bullshit? By speaking what's popular? It's probably a lie. Because a lot of stuff that's popular right now as being talked about is a lie. Do you want to make a hot dollar right now and be popular right now and no one remember you in the long run? Or do you want to be somebody that you may not be understood right now, but you're listening to your heart, you're listening to your gut, and you know it's gonna make sense sometime in the future, and you know you're doing the right thing. That's the meat. That's the art right there. And there's so many of you out there that are like that, you just have to believe in it. So if you hear it from me, just trust it. It's true. On that note, I'm going to say adieu. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful night. And I love you all. And I just hope that you're doing amazing things as you always are. And I'm so grateful to know you. And uh, let's keep making the world a badass place to be in. In a really great way. And breaking down those walls of bullshit. That's a really good thing too. Alright, good night you guys.